Hey, what's up everybody? It's your girl Different and welcome to Different's World YouTube Vlog. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day like me and if not, I hope you're manifesting, planning, and preparing for a better one because it will surely come to you guys. Uh, so for today's vlog, I'm going to be talking about another taboo issue or topic in America, um, the uh, critically acclaimed abortion laws as you guys who are who haven't been living under rock some y'all know uh, they recently overturned the historical Roe versus Wade um, decision Supreme Court decision to whereas it is now illegal and I believe about 12 or 13 states now for abortion is still legal in 20 plus states plus DC um, however um, due to recent uh, activities they overturned it now and it's illegal and um, and threatening in, in more than half of the states. Excuse me, I got some of mine, but we're gonna keep it rolling. <laughs> um, give me a little bit of background about Roe versus Wade. Um, I actually had to do a little history report back on this in high school, and from what I can remember in doing my little updated research, uh, this all started back in 1973 with a 22-year-old Caucasian woman by the name of uh, Norma McConaughey. McCon uh, she went by Jane Roe at the time because she didn't want her identity to be revealed until after the decision, and Wade came from the uh, the judge at the time, his name, who was overseeing the, the, uh, the case. Uh, was Henry Wade, and so that's how it became Roe versus Wade. Um, now, with this lady, young lady here, Norma McConver, her issue was she was 22, single, and on pregnant with her third child, and she didn't have any medical excuse or, or emergency as to why she wanted to abort the child. Her simple um, thought was it was her right. She didn't want the child. She couldn't afford it, and so that. Um, led to uh, basically a revolution as to where, you know, it gave women the right to choose whether they wanted to, you know, carry their child or abort uh, their pregnancy. Um, I believe it's between, bef I know it's not before 26 weeks, so if it's up to 26 weeks, you can't abortion, uh, have an abortion, but uh, any time below that, uh, you could. And so, um, after years of, of fighting with them, they finally uh, agreed that abortion was legal and it was a woman's right to choose to do what she wants with her body. And it is true. I agree with that more so. It's a woman's right. It's my right to do what I want with my body and every other woman's right as well to do with their body as they so choose. Um, however, if you ask me my opinion or whether if I'm pro-life or pro-choice, uh, here is my answer. I am actually both pro-life and pro-choice. Uh, one person said, well, you can't have it both ways to see one or the other. Yes, you can. And let me break that down for you. There are so many reasons why I am pro-life, and then there so, is only one reason why I am pro-choice. Um, so, for one, why I'm pro-life is, is the main reason, you know, it's a child's life, you know. They didn't ask to be here as well as, you know, just like anybody else, you know, they have that right to live their lives, you know, in a very retrospect. And again, before I get too deep into it, I want y'all to know I'm not attacking anybody, but in difference, well, you will hear my opinion and my true thoughts about it. So um, and you don't have to agree with me and I don't have to agree with you, That's but that's the point of, you know, with Third Eye Entertainment, we push this envelope so that we can have these conversations that need to be had. And with that being said, you know, I, again, with the reason why I am pro-life, for one, again, you know, you got to think about that child. They didn't ask to be here, and now you're just taking away that choice for them all in all. And that excuse being, oh, whether if, you know, you can't afford it or, you know, due to, you know, being raped or incest. And I know I understand some certain situations are detrimental, and I understand that. But, again, here's where I... I, I, I I draw that line because, for one, there are so many more options before you can get to abortion to kill an unborn child. Number one, you have adoption. Uh, you can give it up, give the child over to the state. You can let a family member raise that child or a friend. Uh, use contraceptives, you know, protections. <laughs> so many more options than just, you know, choosing to terminate that unborn child's you know, chance of living because, you know, one, you either can't afford or you just don't want to take care of it and you're using that excuse, so it's my right. Um, yeah, you, you do have that right to choose. And I agree, and my, and my reason why I say I'm pro-life, the only reason I say it's, 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 it's deemed, you know, justifiable to terminate an unborn child's life in the case if 
you know, it's a life-threatening emergency or the, the pregnancy is high risk. That is the only reason, in my opinion, that abortion should be legal. Should be legal. Now, all that other, oh, because that the woman was raped or she, she was pregnant by one of her family members, there are other options out there before you just terminate that pregnancy because of that circumstances. Adoption, you know, letting somebody else raise that child. Man, there's so many people out there who want to have children and can't have them. And so, you know, why, why, you know, I don't want to say kill two birds with one stone, but, <laughs> you know, help yourself out and, when, and while helping others, you know, and saving a life at that. And so, it's, it's for me, that's why I'm pro-choice, excuse me, pro-life first before pro-choice. It's because there's just too many alternatives before it gets to just simply aborting the baby. Um, now, as far as when it comes to the men involved, uh, yeah, y'all don't have no right to tell us what to do with our bodies unless you played a role in that child's conception then you in regards to when that woman and that's carrying your potential child yes that man has the right to you know say whether or not you know that child should live and even if it's a case to where the mother does not want the child but the male or the father side of the family wants the child there's another option for you to let the that father side of the family raise that child or vice versa, if it's at that type of situation the way you have sometimes, you know, the men in the relationships, you know, trying to convince the woman that, hey, it's not a good time to have the baby, have the abortion. Man, before you do that, just think about other options out there. Before you get to, you know, spending that $600 just to, you know, vacuum a child out of the JJ, <laughs> think about, you know, the other options you have before you get to that. And also, as well as, Think about the aftermath. I can personally attest to, you know, a personal experience I had when I was in foster care. I think I was around in 11th grade, I was in a group home, and one of the girls there, who was, I think, 16, 17 years old, found out she was pregnant and just, without any immediate thought, had an abortion. When, you know, she came back to the shelter or the facility, she was just distraught about it. You know, her mental state it was not what she expected and you know that's the thing about abortions that these clinics don't tell you is the aftermath what the abortion does to you and how it affects you mentally and you know when it comes to these abortion clinics they only see money a dollar, dollar sign so they, they don't they don't give a damn and so they're not going to tell you that aftermath and how that's going to affect you you know mentally or spiritually you know down the road sure in that time frame now that you're living you know you, you're off the hook you don't have a kid to take care of but I'm willing to bet my last dollar, you know, any woman out there that's had an abortion, and it's no judgment for me, but like I said, I'm keeping it real, I call it how I see it, but any woman out there that's had an abortion, I'm willing to bet my bottom dollar that sometime down the road they regretted it or had some type of mental anguish about that. And so that's also something to consider, you know, when having, you know, or thoughts of having an abortion. Um, so... That, that's, you know, and another thing goes, as well as, you know, I'm going to be real with you. A lot of times people are, are, are howling about oh, it's a medical issue in regards to abortion. Let's be real with you. Most, most of the time, people have abortions because they don't want their responsibility of taking care of another child or, you know, their financial burden. But simply put, if y'all don't want their responsibilities, then, you know, here's another option for you. You know, keep your legs closing and keep your dick in your pants. That's also an option there for you. Before you get to that point, you know, you guys got to know and understand when y'all out here, you know, bumping and grinding, it's a possibility that you might get pregnant or get a woman pregnant and you might have to deal with these types of things. And so before you, you get into it, ask yourself, you know, damn, is it worth it? Let me strap up. Oh, do I have on birth control? Or damn, is it even worth it? Can I just wait and say, you know, move on? Ask yourself, man, before you get to that point where you just decide to take an unborn child's life, man, because at the end of the day, your mom could have took your life away. She could have aborted you, but she did it. She gave you a chance to live. Yeah. And so it is no judgment for me, but it is, you know, that that advocacy and pushing for the little guy and in this term is the unborn child because they don't have a voice. They don't have a choice, you know, and so I'm speaking for them and on their behalf. 
And for the women out there who, who's had an abortion or who is pro-choice, more power to you. There's no judgment for me. I'm not judging you. You do your thing. You do what's best for you. But for me and mine, you know, if I lay down and have a kid or make a kid, I'm going to do, do my, take care of the kid. And if I'm not financially fit and, and God forbid if there's a medical situation to where, you know, I'm faced with that decision, then that's going to be have a decision I'm going to have to make with, you know, my spouse in between God. Um, I wouldn't, you know, have that decision based off, you know, what the society is saying, you know, we live in a society where so many norms, it's not natural, but it's normal, you know, and, and it, again, it's no judgment, but sometimes you just got to call it how I see it, you know, man, <laughs> there's so many, you know, lives that could have been saved and, and opportunities that for families who, who can have children and want to have children, man, there's so many people out there that want to adopt and so why take away that option for them and take away that option for that unborn child it's just so many more alternatives and better alternatives I say in my opinion before you know you just getting down to that choice of spending that little six hundred dollars to you know have them stick a vacuum up your JJ and suction out the baby that's how it goes um I was going to put a little video on to show you how it's done, but I didn't want to get too gritty. And so I'm just going to keep it simple and just talk shit and rant and rave to you guys about it. And um, just know that, you know, whether you're pro-life or pro-choice, you know, having that conversation that needs to be had about abortion laws and abortion rights, it is, is excuse me, y'all. Y'all know how to go. It is what it is. <laughs> um, but again, with, with, abortion laws and abortion rights, uh, these conversations need to be had and constantly had, and especially in regards with teen pregnancy, man. And I hope that now that they know with these abortion laws being reversed, <laughs> that that's a wake-up call to them to, to practice more abstinence. And if you can't do abstinence and you just got to be grown, then be grown about it and, pra and, and practice uh, having protected and safe sex. That also can save you the heartache and trouble of going through an abortion. Um, as well as, you know, that mental anguish, again, just think about, again, that mental anguish that it brings, not just for the mother, but the father as well. Not a lot of people think about, you know, the, the father in play and how that might affect and hurt him, whether if he wants a child or not. You still got to consider that man's feelings and opinion because he helped participate in creating that life. And so, but in regards to any other man trying to tell another woman what to do with her body and <laughs> don't know it from A to Z, and it had nothing to do with, you know, making that baby that's in her belly. You know, y'all can shut the fuck up. That's not your business. Shoot, you know, another, what another option would be a, 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 a vasectomy, you know. <laughs> a lot of y'all talking about, you know, abortion laws and women tying their twos. Don't also forget, you know, it takes two to, to make three. And so for the men out there, I don't hear y'all talking about vasectomy laws. And so um, y'all so worried about, you know, what we doing with our bodies. What about y'all? You know, keeping y'all dicking y'all pants and using y'all the little putting little raincoats on your buddies when it's time for some action that helps as well. And for those out there who who don't want to take care of their responsibilities or don't want you know the women y'all having these babies with to have those babies, you know, think about you know how that's gonna affect y'all in the long run, man. That's y'all child too, y'all see too, so. I, I don't necessarily agree with, like I said, I know this is a little contradictive of me, but hey, I don't necessarily agree with men in general telling women what to do with their bodies. But in case, if it's, it's as long as it's only, actually, if it's just the man that, that had anything to do with that, that conception, then in regards to that woman and that unborn child, he has a say. But all other, you know, in general, speaking on abortion and as what a, a woman should do with her body, y'all don't have any rights to that. So if that's the case, y'all. Y'all saying, you know, women should just keep our legs closed. Y'all should keep your dick in your pants and get a vasectomy <laughs> instead of telling us what to do. Um, so that's also an option as well. A lot of people don't want to talk about that, but that that's an option on the table as well. Um, but in any case, the only man that's allowed to speak on a woman in regards to her body is when it's the man that's involved in that, that con con conception of the child. Okay? That's how I break that down. So that's how a person in my shoes can be pro-life and pro-choice at the same time. Yeah? <laughs> okay, guys. So with that being said, I want to close this video out 
with those out there, making sure y'all keep your heads up. Oh, and also, uh, for those who need the resources, I found you can go to theguardian.com and it'll show you all the states uh, updated laws on abortion, you know, what's still legal. Again, there still are states out there that are legal, uh, that, uh, that abortions are legal in, in, as well as in D.C., and so do your own research and look online, do do your own homework and find out, you know, what states that you live in and, and how the abortion laws affect you guys. Yeah. And so with that being said, you guys, make sure y'all like, share, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel and this video. And don't forget to go to my website and purchase my book. What if a controversial paradigm shift? Here it is, you guys. This is another taboo issue that we talk about here at Third Eye Entity. Um, again, my book was written to inform and encourage thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. And I've done this through graphic and provocative illustrations. So again, please be advised. It's intended for a mature audience only. If you can't take this heat, then don't bother coming to this kitchen. But if so, head on over to DifferenceWorld.net and get your copy right here and now. Yeah? <laughs> what else we got going on you guys in Difference World? Let's see. What else we got going on in Difference World, you guys? So, I know I'm a little late behind on that, but I wanted to get my abortion vlog posted before I put my another travel vlog up. So, my Jamaica is coming right after you guys, so be on the lookout for that. And then I got some more podcast interview I'll be posting with you guys. Um, a lot going on for the month of July in Difference World, you guys. So stay tuned and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And also making sure you guys keep your mental health in check. Again, it's okay to not be okay, but do not sit there and not be okay, okay? If you need to, you guys, if somebody out there that you know or if it's you, give them this number, 1-800-273-8255. Or you can go online to mentalhealthishealth.us. Or if you need, for those who are outside the U.S., you can go to incounseling.com. It gives you a directory for all the uh, countries, their websites and phone numbers for the suicide hotline. Uh, or you can text 741-741 if you're in the States. Yep. <laughs> okay, you guys. So I know I'm just talking a lot and rambling on. But we're going to end this video out on a positive note, although we did talk about a sensitive and taboo subject. Um, we're still going to keep it light and wish you guys nothing but the best in positivity and making sure whatever it is in life that you're feeling you're destined for, you have to manifest, plan, and prepare for it. And then it will surely come to you guys. Difference world. Come and learn. What if? What if in 1619 Africans started dealing in slave trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift? It's a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America. Through graphic but provocative illustration, What If provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical. What If, a controversial paradigm shift by author different Go to differenceworld.net.